In this video, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be doing another concavity problem submitted by one of our students. Now, this is going to be the next three problems. We're going to do A in this one, we'll do B in the next, and C into the third, uh, the third video. And for all these, for all these problems, we want to find the inflection points, uh, all the extrema, and um, sketch the graph. So like the rest of these, we're going to need to find the first derivative of x and the second derivative of x. So let's dive right in. The first derivative of x, we'll use our chain rule to get to x squared minus 1 to the 1 power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And this is going to be equal to 0, and we can solve this to find all of our critical points. Now, the first 0 is going to come where x is equal to 0 because it multiplies everything. So we have one extrema at x equals 0. The next extrema comes wherever this value is equal to 0. Because if x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, 0 multiplies everything else equals to 0 again. This can be factored into x plus 1 and x minus 1. So this gives you plus and minus 1 as your other two points for extrema, or your other two critical points, that is. So everywhere at 0, at negative 1, and at 1, we're going to have either a maximum or a minimum. And we're not quite sure yet but we do know that the derivative at these points is equal to 0. So that's max minimum or inflection point. Either way. All right, so now that we've solved that, let's go on and let's find the second derivative. So we'll want to rewrite this equation first as 4x times x squared minus 1, which we'll then go on to write as 4x to the third minus 4x. And that'll be a lot easier to take the derivative of. So our second derivative is going to equal 12x squared minus 4, which we're going to, again, set equal to 0, because this is going to tell us where the rate of change of the rate of change is equal to 0. The first derivative tells us where the rate of change of the function is equal to 0. The second one tells us where the rate of change of the rate of change is equal to 0. So basically, wherever this is 0, we're going to have a straight line of some slope. Whereas in the first derivative, we have a horizontal line. All right, 12x squared minus 4 equals 0. This is going to be x squared is equal to 1 third. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of one third. Now that we have these, well now we're, excuse me. Now that we have the points where our second derivative is equal to zero, we need to set up an interval to determine whether we have concave up or concave down. So we need to keep our second derivative here. And I need to clear up a little bit of room. And I'm actually, I'll rewrite the first derivative up in the corner here. f prime of x is equal to 4x to the third minus 4x. So like any of these other problems, let me erase this too, we are going to have from negative infinity all the way to negative square root of 1 over 3. Then we'll have from negative root 1 over 3 to root 1 over 3. And then we'll have from positive 1 over 3 to positive infinity. So this is going to test our function all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. We need to pick out test values in every one of these and plug them into our second derivative to find if it's positive or negative. If it's positive, we're going to be concave up. If it's negative, we'll be concave down. 
So uh, the square root of negative one third. Well, this is 0.33 square root, so negative one would certainly suffice. We can use uh, zero for this range, although we're not going to. We'll use uh, one half, and you'll find well, I don't know if that's small enough. We use 0.1. You'll find out why we're not using zero in just a little bit. And then we'll use positive one for this interval. Actually, no, zero does work here. Sorry, I was looking at the first derivative. Um, the reason I didn't want to use zero, I was looking over here at the first derivative, and if you have zero to the third times four minus four over zero, this gives you zero, it doesn't give us any information. But in the second derivative here, because uh, we have this minus four here, it's fine. So sorry about that, sorry about the confusion. All right, for starters, let's put negative 1 into the derivative here. We'll have negative 1 squared is equal to positive 1. 12 minus 4 is equal to positive 8. So this is going to be concave up. The 8's not relevant. We just need to worry about the positive. If we put 0 into the equation, we just get minus 4. So this is a negative, and it's going to be concave down. And if we put 1 into it, it's the same as negative 1. It's going to give us positive 8. So this is concave up again. So we're going to have some type of concave curvature from negative infinity to negative roots 1 over 3. Then it'll be concave down in that range there. And then it'll be concave up again. Now this is going to tell us a little bit of information about this function. Because we're concave down, we're in the range that has 0, x equals 0 is going to be a max. Basically, if you take a look at this little curve that I drew here, 0 occurs right there. It's a maximum. And for the same reason, plus and minus 1 are going to be minimums. So let's take our root 1 over 3. Let's draw some dotted lines for a minus. So, so far what we know is we're concave down in this range, and we're concave up in this range. 